So th thanks, Liz. I'm really excited to be uh, to be here again, and uh, thanks to Liz and Tishna for putting on what, what I think one, is one of the most inspirational and hopefully influential events in our industry. I've been working in interactive since uh, 2002, and I'm still not sure what to call our work. I know we were kind of joking about that this morning, but I think to echo Elan, let's not use the word transmedia. Um, I've been using the, the label interactive doc, interactive documentary since 2009, and our, our interactive docs have received a lot of attention, and although we're really honored with the critical attention, I'm even happier that the, the form of interactive and our industry is looking more and more ready for the mainstream. So here's a sample of our work uh, from the last few years, in case you haven't seen it. the St. Lawrence River, and uh, we're studying the beluga whales. This is a very threatened population. Thank you. 
think you have something to do with keeps me out of trouble. I'm going to talk about the Circa 1948 um, story world in a moment, but to get there, I just uh, have to backtrack to um, our Bear 71 story world to see how we got here. So we combined several forms of, of storytelling into what we dubbed a story world, you know, just to, in the tradition of making up terms and stealing from the gaming industry in this case. So for Bear 71, um, we, we created four parts. Um, Act 1 was a uh, live performance that we performed at Sundance and in and probably in around 10 cities around the world uh, in the following year. Uh, we had an installation that moved around to several cities and also uh, was at a museum for four months. And of course, the interactive documentary that you know. And, um, and then around that, we wrapped uh, something that we worked on with Lance and his team, um, Social Narrative, which was telling micro stories around the same themes of the project through social media, you know, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, creating, experimenting with, um, with gameplay um, in social media. So, moving on, computers or trucks, I'm, this is a Steve Jobs quote. I don't think anyone's quoted Jobs today. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's astounding, but uh, when I s uh, talked about this earlier this year, we projected how tablets would surpass desktops, and it's pretty much on track. It's, they're, they're, it's looking like early 2014 before tablets surpass desktops, and smartphones have outsold them this year by three times already. So, you know, we, we talk about the age of the interface. Computing has really followed the interface, and, you know, first the keyboard, then the mouse, and then touch, and, you know, next is the real world, hopefully, right, and what we can do in terms of natural computing. I'm not sure Google Glass is quite it, but, you know, I think it's a good step in the right direction. Someone talked about Oculus uh, with Chris Milk. And, uh, and his back project, and yeah, we're, we're doing some, some work around that as well. It's a really engaging way to tell stories. And out of, out of this, we kind of crafted and updated our, our guiding statement, and we, we added the word platform to it for this, for this year, and with that, kind of our tablet strategy. This was, I'll just let it play in the background. This was our, our first project under a tablet strategy where we devised the, the story to match the form of going tablet first. We, we started on this project for the web and weren't quite happy with the results, so we, we started over and this is a, a beautiful touch experience that's, those are a couple short links there. 
Um, it just came out two weeks ago, and it's free on the App Store, on both App Stores. And it's, um, it's something we're really happy with. It's a, it's a story about um, a grandson um, who documents his grandfather's last hunt. And his grandfather dodged the draft when he was young to be with a woman he loved. And he lived in the woods and hunted to survive. And he later paid the price, but every year he went back to hunt. And we were able um, to capture the story uh, through his grandson as, you know, so it's a reading experience with the cinematic soundtrack and also another way to, to look at photos uh, with beautiful animations built in. So yeah, if you get a chance to download that, um, it's been featured in the Canadian App Store for the last three weeks, and uh, it's available in, in six versions. So iPad and Android tablets first, also works on the phone. And, um, and then also, uh, lastly, we put it on the web um, for audience. So. Now, with that, um, we move on to 19, circa 1948. And um, you know, this, this year, you know, we were talking about we experiment and we fail, often fail a lot, and that's definitely one of our mottos. Uh, we, we, we definitely want to take um, risks, and this year we're trying version two of the story world where we're, we're really bringing a lot together. So with that, I'd like to um, bring up Stan Douglas and uh, have him talk about uh, circa 1948. Hello, good afternoon. Um, uh, my name is Stan Douglas, I'm an artist, visual artist. I do photography, film, and video of various sorts. For the last 10 years or so, I've been making what I call um, uh, recompetent narratives. Uh, these are, are videos or films that uh, change their story over time, often composed of small narrative elements that get uh, reshuffled according to algorithms um, on, a, on a projection screen. Um, these, in a way, run by themselves. They're not interactive in any way. Basically, the audience walks in and sees these works, which uh, often last um, days or weeks or years to unfold uh, because of all the permutations that are within, within the storytelling. Uh, but for this work, uh, circa 1948, I wanted to take a different approach, an approach that sort of allows the, the user to um, not exactly determine the way in which it's going, uh, but uh, be involved in uh, making decisions that uh, change the way that the story takes place. As opposed to an interactive activity where a decision is made, taking you out of the story, I wanted to find some way to sort of keep the, the user inside the story the entire time uh, by making what we call a, um, a kinesthetic interface. So basically you're uh, using your iPhone or your uh, iPad uh, as a, a window into another world. And basically as you walk around, you use the, um, uh, the camera of your device as sort of a op big optical mouse. So as you walk, you walk into the space, you look around, you see uh, the space around you. This was in a way inspired by a, um, a film I saw when I was a kid, which I find quite disturbing, and I didn't know what the title was or how bad the movie was until I saw it later in life, uh, called 13 Ghosts, in which uh, a character uh, is given a, um, a, a castle or a home by a, a, a crazy uncle, and only when they find these glasses that were uh, in that castle, it's a 1950s film, uh, does the person realize that there are these ghosts who are haunting the place, and they can only see it with these glasses on. Of course, this is sort of a, a prefigures uh, They Live by John Carpenter, and of course, Google Glass itself, uh, this, and the whole concept of augmented reality. But what I found affecting was that, well, this is, that there was always a, a ghostly presence that's there in a location that you're uh, unaware of. Um, a lot of my work deals with historical conditions, historical transformations, uh, and this work as well um, deals with the presence of the past in the present. So somehow uh, the past, which uh, is sort of crucial to the way we live today, uh, even though we've forgotten, is somehow latent uh, in the conditions we, um, uh, we, we find around us. Um, this work is uh, called 19, uh, Circa 1948, uh, and as such is um, referring to events which took place in that year. Uh, specifically in Vancouver. The story is quite specific, uh, quite historical, uh, but in a way it's uh, kind of uh, characteristic of what happened uh, around uh, North America and indeed the world in the post-war period. It looks at something which is a, a transformation of society uh, between the war, wartime, and the 1950s. We kind of have a clear idea of what the war is like uh, with, um, uh, the, of course, the battles going on, but also um, black markets at home, uh, people doing things they're not proud of to, to, to survive in times of uh, economic crisis and, and rationing. And of course, the 50s, where there's a, suit, a new kind of morality uh, uh, takes precedence. But that in-between period between 1945 and 1950 is really discussed, and this, this work in a way examines that quite closely. Um, a central piece of research was uh, the trial of uh, this large man over here, uh, Chief Walter Mulligan, who was the um, chief of police in Vancouver, uh, who in 1948 began trying to get uh, this man, 
uh, Len Cuthbert to uh, expand his uh, collections of, um, of gambling organizations. Basically, the, the chief was um, thought things, things were still business as usual as it was during the, during the wartime, and he get this, this man to expand their collections uh, of uh, gambling operations in Vancouver. Unfortunately, he's, or for, the, for the chief, he talked to an honest cop who said, I'm, I'm not going to do that. He went to the mayor uh, and told the mayor, who was chief of the police board, or head of the police board, um, what was going on. The mayor did an investigation to see if anybody knew about this in the city. Uh, the investigator said no, and they just re, uh, sort of disbanded the, 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 um, the squads, and that, that was it. It was not until a few years later, well, this was also during the inquest, which happened in 1955, in which we saw um, the chief's East End mistress, he had an East End one and a West End one. Uh, this woman, Helen Douglas, was allowed to give testimony in disguise during the, the inquest. Anyway, uh, Mulligan's problem was he, he tried to put a squeeze on this man, who had been his uh, a partner in the 1940s, uh, because he was running a kind of a small wrestling uh, organization and, and betting organization as well. Uh, Mulligan's idea was to uh, weed out all the small organizations uh, as a way of having big ones that, that would remain, and he could make um, fewer collections of more money. This guy told a, a journalist, which in effect um, uh, brought the story to light, and the inquest took place. Um, the inquest had no real result. Basically, the uh, commissioner said, we've only heard evidence against Mulligan and nothing in his defense, therefore it would be unfair to proceed with a trial. Uh, Mulligan left town, became a chief of police at a bus depot in Los Angeles, and that's the last we heard of him. But the inquest itself tells an amazing story of uh, Vancouver in this era, which was uh, a place of very lax morals in the 1940s. Uh, girl, uh, gangs of girls who would rob uh, West End establishments, fence them on the east side, um, a, um, a crime wave based on the uh, drug war between uh, Asian-based um, heroin supplies and supplies coming from uh, through Montreal uh, based on Italian mafia, uh, a different world than what we know, uh, uh, know today in Vancouver. This is the image of East and West Vancouver, the downtown core on the left, east side on the, um, on the right. Zooming into an area called Hogan's Alley, which was a, a mixed uh, black, Italian, and Chinese neighborhood uh, in Vancouver, where basically all the laws were suspended, where you had prostitution, gambling, and bootlegging was uh, permitted. Often that the mayor himself would go there, West End personalities would go there uh, to, to go and have a good time. Jazz musicians who were playing, who couldn't go to, to clubs downtown, went to Hogan's Alley to have fun. And the Hotel Vancouver uh, from 1948, which was torn down in 1948, which was uh, emptied when they built a new hotel, but had been squatted by uh, servicemen who returned from war and had no place, place to live when the place was empty, so it became this kind of gothic uh, uh, environment. Both these locations were, were slated for demolition, as I, as I said, around 1948. Hogan's Alley, during that sort of craze for um, uh, urban renewal, getting rid of urban blights that happened throughout North America, and the, the hotel, just because it was actually a more beautiful building, the new, new um, hotel that was there, was torn down to make way for a parking lot. So all the people who were in these areas knew that there was something going on, something was going to happen to would, the, the, where they were living was going to disappear, and they had to make a decision as to what they would do. Would they um, go along with um, uh, the status quo, allow things to happen, or change that to, to their benefit? So this is the, the context in which all the characters that we see in 19, uh, uh, circa 1948 uh, taking place. Um, as I said, this will be, oh sorry, image of Hogan's Alley from the 1930s. Uh, there's no real images from the period I'm looking at, and our research based on Aerial photographs, hearsay, and um, uh, a sort of a fire, fire department maps was used to make these historically accurate models that you'll, you'll see in a second. Uh, another view of Hogan's Alley and a view of the hotel with the current hotel on the right and the, the foggy hotel in the distance, um, the moose and bison that sort of uh, decorate the top of the building, uh, as well as the, the grand lobby of, of this, this place that was uh, ultimately torn down. Um, so based on photographs and, and uh, plans, we built these uh, historically accurate models of the interior. Uh, again, with the fictionists being a hostel, we have the, the um, uh, cafeteria uh, built inside the ballroom of the hotel. Um, a, um, a bookmaker has made an operation inside the telegraph office. Um, we see a winch that's sort of carrying stuff as they're scavenging um, wood and metal from the building and um, at, in, in, in advance of being torn down. Uh, a look at the, um, uh, the cashier's office. Um, the, a character named Larry Mitchell, who runs a hostel, um, has got sort of a, a black market operation going on in his office, um, an upper floor lobby, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, inside these locations, we see uh, different characters, 18 characters, who are represented by 
uh, these sort of glowing orbs or sort of sprites which sort of move around the space. As you get close to them, you can actually follow their, their stories as they move about the space, have conversations with people, um, and uh, build your own narrative based on who you want to, to pay attention to. Do you follow this character or that character? Um, and, but eventually, as you spend time with it, the piece, you realize that these two locations, even though they're quite uh, uh, distant spatially, are interconnected economically and, and socially, um, if not morally in, in certain ways. Um, so I'll show you now a, a clip from this, um, or some, some examples of this, uh, of this iPo iPad and uh, iPhone app, um, showing you the kind of imagery that's this in there. It's a work in progress. Um, the frame rate is half of what it should be. Uh, we're seeing popping when it goes between low, medium, and high resolution models. Um, and there, there's no proper scripting for the orbs, which should be uh, moving when they speak and having a bit of uh, action based on their uh, physical moving, movements in the space. But I'll give you an idea of how this, that piece will look when it's released in uh, March of, of next year. Uh, here's a, a, a sort of example of circa 1948. What? What? Are you going to stand there watching me all day? You've been sweeping this porch for 20 minutes. I guess I'm all done then. Well, then get yeah? Yeah, get it. If you're all done, you're done. What are you waiting for? You ain't paid me yet. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. Oh, let me see. 15 cents an hour times zero hours equals, okay, hang on, let's see. Zero times five is zero. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 let me finish my calculations. And zero times one is zero. Carry the zero makes Yep, looks like it's zero. I've been here all morning. Half that time you were playing kick the can with those kids like some sort of simpleton. How old are you, 30? Listen, you got to keep the goodwill with those kids. I'm 33. Otherwise, they'll turn on you like a pack of dogs. Your place will be a target, rotten eggs in the night. Wake up, find they've carved words in your door. You know when the kids turn on you, you're out of business. Oh, shut it. Those kids know they wouldn't sit down for a week if they didn't half thought about pranking me. I know them all. Oh, come on, Henry. Can you just pay up? I'll finish the other jobs tomorrow. You finish the porch right now. It's as good as it's going to get. I can't get it any better. The more I sweep it, the dustier it get, because the wood's all rotten. It all comes up in bits. Give me that. Don't hurt yourself. Nah, see what I'm saying? You got to paint those steps, seal them up. Well, there's a gallon of whitewash in the back. Go get it and clean us up. Now? It won't dry before you want to open your joint. White footprints all through your establishment? That won't look good. Paint one side of steps today. Hang a sign says wet paint, customers go up the other side. You got a sign? Make a sign. Aren't you some sort of artist? Yeah, I'll make it a masterpiece, but I can do it tomorrow, first thing. And then I'll pay you tomorrow, last thing. I was working late last night at the train station, covered a shift unloading trunks for some stingy white lady. That's not my problem. Look, I'm not paying you to work for them. Fine, I'll paint it. But I'm going to take a break first, and then I'll come back. You just came back from a break. That wasn't a break. That was business. Business down at Buddy. No. Yeah, I saw you come out of Buddy's. Yeah, just a quick thirst quencher. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when you spend the money I pay you at the competition. Well, you haven't paid me yet. That was Great Northern's money. You know what I mean. I come here all the time. This was where I play cards. You run a good game, Henry. I know I do. But this neighborhood is getting a little crowded, and Buddy is trying to squeeze me out. Well, learn if there's no money involved. We'll start with a hundred dollar step. <laughs> That's an expensive tutorial. Pay attention and it'll pay for itself. All right. Here we go. So, uh, what's the word at the mayor's office? Oh, well, he's got a big set of crosshairs fixed all right about where I'm sitting now. I guess I'm in for the one. Sounds like you're aiming to duck for cover. All right. I'll call. This neighborhood has been designated the symbolic battleground for law and order. What's that, a dollar? I'll raise you two. I'll raise you five. Hmm. Shit. Got something good? I like it more than your pair of queens. How'd you... Are these cards marked? Wouldn't know if they were. I'm not looking at them. The story's on your face. All right, I fold. What did you have? Nothing yet. Shit. Lucky guess on my queens. Not lucky. Okay, how'd you know? Next time, just watch what you're doing and do something else. What was I saying? Anyway, housewives come down on the interurban shop at Woodward's, and it drops them off on your doorstep. I'll bet one. Call. They walk to catch a trolley, and they don't want to come through here, and so it's bad for business downtown. I'll check. Check. That's a weak excuse. You're just getting nervous. I just think we can negotiate around Chief Mulligan's operations for a while. I'll just... Ah, oh, no. No. I'm going to check. That too. 
Mm. Oh. Mm. A call. Chief Mulligan is too confident that he's untouchable. What's this? Balloon. I see that. What am I supposed to do with that? Just put your lips together and blow. What's going on? Have you seen Buddy? Yeah, he was around, but I think he's gone on business. Good. Start blowing. Now, why are we doing this? Wanted to surprise Buddy. Why? Well, there's some big shots coming tonight. I want to pull out the stops. Balloons? Yes, and what about it? You want me to get a pony? Maybe a circus clown? Sure, wise guy. Just blow these up and we'll climb above the garden in that minute. At midnight, we'll get the band that played Buddy's favorite and we'll bring them all floating down. It'll look great, real classy like. If it's what you want. Everyone dancing in them, just like in the movie. Ah, uh, you know how to entertain, Mary. We have to make people happy. And you do that without a doubt. A little more air in there, would you? So you like the pictures, Mary? I like them all right. Did you see that naked city? No. It's good. I'd see it again if you need an escort. It's not my kind of picture. I like musicals. Ah, you like your stories, uh, sweet mm. I just like to enjoy myself. I like the stories that are true to life. I get all that true to life here every day. I go to the movies to get away from Does it. Does your man take you to the pictures? You know, when he's here? He's not one for that, no. When's he get home? Don't know. Keep blowing. Rumor has it some Hollywood stars are coming up this way. Maybe tonight. Well, if they come by here... Yeah? It'll make the night all the more glamorous. So it will. Were you here when Errol Flynn came by? No, I heard about it. He can break. I heard he's got fast hands and not just for sword fighting. And I heard he's got a pretty big soul. Did he offer to show it to you? I'm too old for him. Likes them young, does he? Would make the new girl across the street look like a spinster. That'll catch up with him at some point. Well, that's why he likes coming up here. Less attention. Are we blowing up all these? Uh-huh. So when Buddy opens up the legit place, yeah. you'll be making sure it suits the posh set from the west side. I won't be working there. Why not? Because I'll be running this place. For crying out loud, not that well, That's why I hate these things. Come on, keep going. I want these all done. But Mary, yeah. it would be the perfect place for you. Better than here. It'd be a real classy joint. If Buddy's there yeah. and I'm there, that's right. then who'd run the beer gardens here? I figured I might. You? Yeah. You'll be with Buddy. I wasn't planning on it. They'll need security there. It's just that I've been Buddy's second for some time. He'll need you down there. He'll need you. You've got the touch. It's more your style. This place is my style because I... I'm just going to cut it there. I got the five-minute warning about four minutes ago, so I'd like to wrap it up now. Um, basically, the, uh, uh, the app has got three modes of use, online, uh, offline, and, uh, and game mode. Online, if you're in locations where they, they were, either in the, uh, the park where the alley used to be or the plaza where the hotel used to be, you can use that as a window in the past to see exactly what was there in a spatially correct terms of the location. Or offline, anywhere in the world, uh, in, a, in a large open space you can walk around in, or sitting in a chair like a, like a game. Phase two of this project is a play called Helen Lawrence that, uh, not with coincidence, opens uh, in March uh, of next year in Vancouver. Um, this play is based on the same, uh, same reality uh, with uh, 12 of the characters from the 18 that were uh, in the app. Um, with the same, same situation of people like scrabbling to um, change their, their lot in life before the whole areas are, are torn down. Um, it's a film noir tale, uh, which is in a way like live cinema. Uh, we have uh, basically a, a set which is a, a blue screen. This is from a workshop done in Banff in, in January. Uh, and four cameras operated by the actors, uh, which are with encoded heads that allow the actors to uh, move dollies, make dolly moves, pans and tilts, matching the uh, composite actors into these, these virtual sets. We actually see a three-dimensional reality on stage, two-dimensional uh, reality on, on the screen, uh, often sort of uh, countering the, the fantasy of what they, they imagine the, the world they want to be on the screen as opposed to reality where they are on stage. Um, uh, the story is, as I said, a film noir tale. A woman who's been uh, accused of her husband's murder, um, which was, was actually uh, committed by her lover, um, has been sent to an insane asylum. She had shock therapy. She comes to Vancouver uh, to find that man and kill him. Uh, in the end, it has a happy ending when she does find him and kill him. Uh, that work is called Helen Lawrence, opening in Vancouver in March. Um, we'll be doing a European tour of, and with a long run at the Kammerspiel in Munich and closing at the uh, Toronto, in Toronto in October next year. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. So just to wrap up, um, I'll just blast over the other parts of the story world that are also coming. Uh, we're working um, on a live version of this of some kind for installation and or live event. And uh, there's going to be a website around the project as well, as well as a social narrative wrapper. So thank you very much. <laughs>